SARS um, in law, as we understand it, um, is entitled to employ smart technologies at the manufacturing so that we can, so firstly, every tobacco manufacturer has to be registered. Um, and there are certain conditions under which the license is granted. One of those conditions is that, um, the, that there must be surveillance of the manufacturing uh, uh, in, uh, establishment. Uh, secondly, there has to be um, record keeping that shows the raw material, where it was bought, the quality of the raw material, because excisable products like tobacco and oil and metals have different grades. And every grade has a different value and every uh, and, and excise duties or customs duties are levied on the value. So there's a lot of manipulation of values. Um, and therefore, we have to have the sophisticated technologies to manage the entire supply chain um, from the point of import, if something comes uh, from abroad, to the point of sale or export, if something goes out again. And, and you have to ask yourself the question, a group of tobacco uh, manufacturers are opposing in law, in court, are opposing this effort by SARS to improve our surveillance technology and to be more aware. If you've got nothing to hide, uh, quite clearly, why would you oppose such an action? So these uh, smart technologies, CCVT ca uh, cameras and related technologies, we are busy Rolling that out, we have obviously uh, in parallel with that uh, appealed the court ruling. I hope that in the longer term, uh, we will be successful uh, through the courts because if we don't survey um, and, and, and enhance the record keeping, uh, this value chain will always be susceptible to, un uh, to, to unscrupulous um, criminals for that, for that matter. Uh, with oil, uh, you know, for example, we have a, a user, a wholesale user of oil has to demonstrate that the oil that they paid was imported because that uh, they've paid duties on, then they're entitled to claim the rebate on the duties. And there again, we have to have assized equipment to measure from the point of purchase through to the point of consumption, the use of oil. Otherwise, um, you are not entitled to claim. Uh, many people, some of the schemes is what we call a carousel scheme. If you export a product, you're entitled to claim the VAT, for example. Um, and so we find that many people declare a particular cargo, whether it's a train or a, a truck or a container, declare it for export, um, but the goods never leave. So they declare it merely to, entice, to, to, to impermissibly and fraudulently have access to the refund. All of this work, we then also use sophisticated um, uh, machine learning. And last year, uh, the intelligence work that we have done through fraud risk detection has yielded just in VAT, um, refund fraud um, has yielded 41 billion rand. But that sounds impressive, but if you look at the size of the problem, uh, we are scratching the surface. We have so much more work to do. And then, of course, SARS is very dependent on the South African police for investigations, for ensuring that a case file uh, can be brought to the MPI, MPA so that there's a good chance for a successful prosecution. And then we are dependent on the walks um, for serious uh, uh, priority crimes. We're dependent on the um, MPA for uh, enrolling these matters and taking it to court. And the process is slow. It is often frustrating. Um, and you know, when I meet with uh, my political principles, I point out why it is so important to invest 
in the criminal justice system, in SARS, in the NPA, to invest in the physical as well as the technology infrastructure at our ports of entry. Our borders are porous. People come through our borders without documentation. We have no way of enforcing our laws. Yeah. Um, and all of this not only erodes economic value, it also erodes social cohesion because we have to coexist with these negative social elements.